Hi, I'm Jason Sullivan of the Rathbone Group, and I'm here with Mike Jacob of Veritas. We're here at the National Association of Subrogation Professionals Conference in Washington, D.C. Thanks for joining us, Mike. Thanks for having me, Jason. So today we wanted to talk about what can adjusters do when they're on the scene of a loss to help increase the likelihood of recovery on a subrogation claim? That's a good question. So adjusters are the front line when it comes to subrogation, and especially if you're sending the evidence off to an expert where the expert doesn't come on site, say you've got a smaller claim or it's a specialized matter where you need an in-depth expert. The adjuster is really the only one that can get that information from the loss site. And without that information recovered at the time of the loss, it may not be available in the future. So the adjuster's role is critical. What are some of the things that they can do to preserve what they're seeing at the scene? So adjusters are great at adjusting claims, but a lot of times they're not thinking with a sub row state of mind, if sure. you will. So adjusters should take at least two minutes and that's all it really takes to take photographs that are re related to the loss itself. So what I like to tell folks is start on the opposite side of the room with your camera and take a picture of where the loss has occurred. Then take two steps towards it, take two more pictures until you're up until, to where the, the, the actual failure has happened. So document that area and then look for marks on the pipes or the fittings or the things around it. And it's really easy to do, really simple. Uh, and that, that will save a lot of heartache on down the line. What we're trying to do is just determine the truth. We want to know what happened, what was there, what wasn't there. We don't want any red herring arguments uh, to come up that might take the case in an unexpected direction. And you brought something here with you today. What is this? So this is a pressure gauge. It goes onto like a hose spigot on the outside of a house or a washing machine hookup. And adjusters can use this to measure the pressure at a lost site. One of the things that manufacturers like to argue, uh, because oftentimes they know there's no way to prove it, is that the failure occurred due to a high water pressure, like in a filter canister or a water heater. Manufacturers will say this with no evidence. And while we can argue against that by examining the fracture and explaining how the fracture propagated over time, that's a very technical argument to make. It's kind of tedious. If the adjuster takes a photo of our pressure gauge hooked up to the house, we know what the water pressure was on the day of the loss or shortly thereafter. That puts that argument to bed. It's cheap, it's easy to do, and it's very convincing when you have a photograph of a gauge. It's, it's maybe even more convincing than tedious technical arguments. So is this something when you have water losses, most adjusters have these that they're taking out to the scene with them? Uh, the adjusters that we've trained do. So when we train adjusters, we give them this gauge, we give them a few other tools. I'm sure other firms do the same, uh, but it's, it's, it's really handy and it's really effective. And you have a busy week while you're here at the conference. You're also presenting. Can you tell us a little bit what your topic is? Yeah, our, our topic is understanding engineering principles using food. We go through some of the common failure mechanisms and we show people what happened using like taffy, stretching the taffy to where it breaks, or using hard candy to illustrate brittle fractures, and we talk about how material forms. Uh, segregation adjusters and attorneys, they need to be able to have at least a basic knowledge of the failure mechanisms they're trying to use to articulate their position. And we found that hands-on is the best way to explain anything. So, so we hope that that experience is shared with them and that they're able to take it back to the office use the information from the site and the hands-on experience here at NASH to better articulate their position. All right. And all of it to lead to greater recoveries after is a loss that you pay out for. Again, I'm Jason Sullivan of Rathbun Group, again joined by Mike Jacob of Veritas Engineering Group. We're at the National Association of Subrogation Professionals Conference, and that's the long and short of it.